Na, na, na. Transformers. Hey, hey, what's up, YouTube? Incline here. Just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been supportive with my DVD projects. Um, right now, I decided to take a clip from my first one, uh, the one that's talking about airbrushing. And I just put it out there on YouTube for free for everyone to, uh, you know, to watch. Hopefully, you can learn something. I know everyone has their own different takes and tricks and techniques and I've learned from a lot of people and uh, applied my own whatever um, so yeah please feel free to uh, watch it come back um, check it out and then uh, most importantly have fun and um, yeah never stop learning paint the world so now let's get into Mi amor. Ah, the airbrush. So again here, have the water eclipse. Uh, I've put some paint and reducer in here. There's another question. Oh, well, how, do I, how much do I reduce it? Well, it's usually good. Look on the bottle and figure it out. If your airbrush is spitting chunks, you'll notice there's a lot with white or paint that has a lot of pigment. Uh, it needs to be reduced a little more. Um, depending on which brand you use, <coughs> follow the instructions. And then always play around with it. Then depending on your air pressure of your compressor, you know, it's, it's one of these, the trial by errors because there's, there's rules, but there's not concrete rules. And as an artist, I would suggest you push your limits, you make mistakes, and you learn what works best for you. So now let's demonstrate with this. I have it reduced about one to one for really thin multiple coats. Let's check out what this can do. So I'm sure you're wondering how I got to this point. Well, as you saw in that little brief intro, you know, there's tricks and techniques to this. Now let's take an in-depth look at exactly how the airbrush works and how to accomplish these tricks and techniques. All right, crew, welcome back. So as you can see behind me, I have a piece of paper laid out. What we're gonna discuss, fades, spray patterns in the coverage, line width, and dagger strokes. All of these will be very important to build your foundation for airbrushing. Just like with everything else in life, if you don't have a good solid foundation, the top's going to crumble. So if you can't grasp the foundations of airbrushing, you're not going to be able to progress. And a few things to keep in mind, remember, be patient, enjoy, just relax doing it, you know, know that you know, you'll get it eventually, don't be frustrated. If it gets too frustrating for you, set it down, walk away. You know, just remember, this, this should be very enjoyable. So let's go ahead and talk about the first thing, which is going to be essential for, for learning how to manipulate the spray patterns. And then we're going to discuss why it's doing what it does. First things first, let's talk about line width. This is going to be very important to learn how to control when just just learning how to control the airbrush. You know, the double action. Remember, pushing down for air and back for paint. So the principle of this, how it works, is the further you pull it back. the more paint's going to come out. So, whoa, what happened there? Well, the more paint that, the more paint that is released when you're pushing down, the more paint that's released as you're pushing down for the air and pulling back for the paint, the further you need to be away. That way, you don't get what's called blowouts. Unless you're doing a piece of artwork, or you want some blowouts. So there's the principle. So remember, down for air and back for paint. So while doing this, remember you want to go fast because if you're too slow, it'll mess you up. Kind of a fluid motion. Remember this is paint, it's liquid. Like surfing, you know, the water. So as you watch, I'm going to do a larger line which will mean that I need to move slower and have the airbrush back further, but I don't, 
but I do not need to be jerky. Did you notice I pushed, if you noticed I pulled back further on the trigger, that allowed more paint to come out. Now as you get closer, remember pushing down for air constantly, you're just going to slightly pull back a little further, or you're going to keep the trigger down and not press back as far. You want to move in a little closer for thinner lines. And you want to find a good area of space to work in that's comfortable for you. Usually this is the zone right here trying to keep all the space for everyone to see this. You know, not exactly where I need to be. So back to the line. Remember, the further you pull back for paint, the further you need to be back from the line. So it's really good to just practice going back and forth. Remember, keep your air down. So remember, for thinner lines, push down for air and do not pull back as far on the trigger and be closer to the paper. I'm barely, barely pulling back and getting these super fine lines. And then the further you pull, pull and so for wider lines, the further you pull back, the more you need to be away from the paper and the slower you need to go. If you do not go, if you don't go slow enough and you're too fast while you're farther back, you'll get splotchy. So a good way to practice, as you can see here, a couple of ways to do it. Start skinny, move back and forth and eventually get your lines bigger or go from big to small remember the further back the trigger goes the more distance you'll need from the paper now let's move on to the second exercise dagger strokes how this works the principle is you're moving your hands, you're moving your hands and your trigger in conjunction with the distance of the paper. It's a circular pattern. And with dagger strokes, there's a lot of things that you can do uh, to your artwork, whether it be illustrations or whether it be on figures. So let's go ahead and take a really close look. I'm going to zoom in on my hands and see how it works. Let's go. Okay, so I've taken my gloves off so you can take a really close look at what my finger's doing and how I'm holding the airbrush. Is we're going to circle, rotate. This is very exaggerated, of course, is this. What we're going to do is you're going to start out heavy and pull down, basically, like a dagger. So the principle behind this exercise, it really helps you to learn how to control the trigger. So we're going to start out large, farther away from the paper, with the trigger back further, allowing more paint. And as we get closer, we're going to push the trigger in, which will obviously make the line thinner and reduce the amount of paint. So this technique really helps you learn control on, on the amount of paint coming out. I'm doing this slowly so you can see what I'm doing. And as you can see when you go too slow it gets a little crooked. Your, your muscles start acting, acting up. Get crazy. So you can also do this backwards, upside down.
and then you can also do it sideways. So you might be curious, okay, well what can be done with this? Well, you could do a little plant. Or if you have something that needs shading, you know, like some teeth or um, a highlight on an edge or a shadow where it gets heavier and lighter, there's plenty of things. But this is definitely a good exercise to learn. We've already discussed line width. What we're doing here is you're learning how to control both line widths. You're learning to take it from large to thin or from thin to large. So as you can see, it all goes in hand in hand. So now that we've done dagger strokes and we've done line width, now let's move on to shading. The principle behind shading is line width, line control. Same thing, you're going to push down for air, pull back for more paint, you're going to move closer for less paint. So the principle behind shading, no big secret, you just learn how to spray less and less paint as you move up, or more and more depending on the, the way your shadow is going. So enough talking, let's get to spraying. So what I'm going to do here is work on shading this edge. Just to give you guys a quick little show of what can be done with an airbrush and with spraying. So what I've done here is I've laid a nice, crisp, hard edge, which is going to make the, the shadow effect look much more real. Let's say our light source is coming from this angle, which would mean this is going to be much darker than here. So again, line control, what we learned here, what we learned here. Pushing down for air, pulling back for paint. So we can get darker, and we're going to fade to lighter and lighter. And this is best done in multiple layers, you know, especially when you're getting used to it and, and you're new. Remember, so you're going to have nice, even strokes here. Pulling back for the paint. So as you, as you can see, I'm getting closer as I want the air to be darker, and I'm getting further away as I want it to be lighter. It's just slight, but it's there. Sometimes I don't always catch myself, my hand might get a little out of whack because I'm so focused on the artwork, but remember, good control because you're holding your airbrush properly. Nice, even patterns, about a 75% overlay, and it'll build up. We start getting darker around the edges here. So all of that is just line width control, moving on up, moving on up. You can get a lot more solid, a lot, a lot less subtle, or a lot, or a lot more subtle. Let's see how convincing this looks. Ah, what is this? That is called overspray. I was hoping to do that. You'll notice as the as you get farther away from your painting, your 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 paint's going to move across the surface. So therefore, when you have your tape here and it stops there paint's going to fall on that. So that can present a problem when you're trying to keep a certain color on a certain area. So how do you fix overspray? Well, you have to respray the area that you just messed up. That's why it's good to always check 
make sure you're masked properly, because if not, it becomes a headache. Ah, uh, we all do. I know you're probably thinking, oh, that fade, yeah, that's all well and good, but how can I practice? I'm going to show you a very simple way uh, to, to practice it. Okay, so we're going to get some tape. Basically, think of, think of a really beautiful sun set, except opposite. That's helpful, right? So the idea here is basically line control, and we're going to work up to a certain area, again, again, and then not as much. For this method, what you want to do is keep a consistent distance from the paper. Obviously, figure out somewhere, practice where you want to be. Where, whenever you're comfortable with that, Go ahead and start spraying. Now we come up a little bit further. Multiple, multiple light passes. Again, about the same amount of paint. And not nearly as high. So down here we're going to darken this, and there's no set rule, you can bring it up a little higher, you can keep it dark, you can keep it darker, it's multiple multiple layers, that's the best way to achieve this effect. Okay, so next, let's focus on changing color. I'm going to put some of the Purple Pearl. This is the acrylic base in my airbrush. Right out of the bottle, it is just a tad bit too thick. I always suggest using what the bottles say and working with what the manufacturer says for reducers. All right, now it's time to move on up. What are we moving on up to? Spray patterns and coverage. This is an actual three-dimensional piece. It's from one of my Junker Transformers. It's from the movie Sideswipe. It has a lot of nice curvature in it. And this could present a problem because you always need to be parallel with the surface you're spraying. I went ahead and changed colors so we can see the coverage and spray patterns on how to make this silver piece purple. So remember, all of this will equal to good spraying here. Remember, always test your color, make sure you're, it's good, spraying fine. So, we're going to remember where, where the angles are so we can really get down in there. Do not just start right there in the middle of something and spray all crazy. Work with a pattern. You know, and remember, multiple, multiple light coats. And always, when you start airbrushing or painting, even when you're, even when you're using the spray can, you're going to start out from your, from your surface and stop after your surface. As we're doing it, focusing on the curvature of the body. There you go, that's going to be your first pass. I'm not pushing anything, I'm not going to try and make it be more covered than it should be. Like I said earlier, slow, multiple passes. This, this helps it be as smooth as possible. Here we go again, with the next pass. Let it sit. You can keep the air flowing out of your airbrush. This helps move air across the surface, which helps it dry. So I'm keeping it a good six, seven inches away from the body panel. Again, letting it dry. So I'm coming around, 
if you feel like it, you can hit the edges. Again, a little bit thicker, but not killing it. If you hear the end of your airbrush making some noise, kind of a or a high pitched, it might be that paint has dried on the tip and you'll need to go in and scrape that off. All right, so we're getting some happy little coverage. Look at this, oh yeah, right there, happy coverage. Again, just letting it move right across the surface, the air picks up all the, the chemicals that need to be removed, or all the, all the vapor that needs to be removed. So there we go. You know, multiple light passes, do not push it. Uh, once you learn how to work with your paint and put it on the surface, it builds up a nice, smooth automobile.